everybody. Welcome to A Culinary Journey. I'm Luca Paris, and I'm here with Harley Sterling today, and we're going to do a real switch in gears on this culinary journey because we're going to do, well, you tell them. What are we doing today, Harley? We're doing sushi. We're doing sushi. That's right. And of course, as you can see by Harley, he looks like a sushi master, does he not? Okay, maybe he doesn't, but when I tell you, he makes some of the most amazing sushi and rolls and the stuff we're going to learn today is incredible. So you need to stick around because Harley and me, hey, that's like a movie. Harley oh, and no, me. yeah, that's something else. <laughs> Harley and me are going to make some fun sushi. Actually, he's going to make it. I'm going to eat it. It's the easiest show I ever did. Oh, so no, you're going to make it too. <sighs> he ruins all my fun. Don't go away because your culinary journey starts now. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Luca Paris, and this is your culinary journey. And I'm here with Harley Sterling. You got it. Got nice it. job. <laughs> he found out his name, and he, we're working on that. It's a perfect thing. <laughs> so we're also going to work on sushi. Now, when you think of sushi, and you look at Harley, you might not put two together. But I've tried his food. I went to Vendetta, and it's absolutely incredible. So I, I, I had to have Harley on the show to show me how to make sushi and teach you how to make sushi at home. So how many years did it take you to learn this? Ugh. Um, I don't even think I've been doing this a full year. A full year? No. So we could teach them in 22 minutes? Absolutely. All right. Definitely can teach you in 22 minutes. Okay. You know, in the old days, it used to take 10 years, right. seven years just to make the rice. But uh, I think we can cut that. All right. Well, let's start with the rice, which is one of the most important parts of this, isn't it? Yes. The rice is definitely the sacred element in all of sushi. And, um, you know, like I said, take, it used to take seven years of apprenticeship just to learn how to make the rice properly. Right. There's a lot of science, like a lot of modern science to it. And, um, but, I, I mean, I just made this this morning. And what this is is a, it's a combination of medium and short grain rice. And what you have to do is you have to rinse it a lot. Because as we were talking about on the radio show, sushi sort of evolved um, with this sticky rice. And, right. You know, it sticks to the paper. It sticks to whatever you sculpt it to. And part of making it sticky is that, um, that milling process in the water, rinsing it, rinsing it until it runs clear. Now, what you want to do is get, you want to get the starch away from the rice or to the outside of the rice to get it sticky? Yeah, you want to rinse it until water runs clear. And the reason for that is because it used to be packed in talc, which okay. was really gross. And yep. so you wanted to make sure everything was gone away. But that almost sort of lightly mills the rice, which um, helps, helps make it sticky during the cooking process. Okay. Now, cooking it is just a matter of one-to-one -one ratio and then yeah if you're cooking it at home on a um, on a with a cast iron pot or any sort of pot on a stove I recommend maybe just a millimeter less than one-to-one um, -one, so a okay. little bit less water than rice just because it's it's hard to get it perfect and too much water will really ruin it whereas not enough you can sort of let it steam at the end okay and bring it bring it to a bring it to a nice nice finish and the other ingredients in there yep I use a, a vinegar mixture which is uh, like rice vinegar. Right. And you can actually mix it with a little bit of, uh, of just normal white vinegar. Really? And what you want to do is just sort of let that simmer at like 110 degrees. You don't want to evaporate too much of the mm -hmm. vinegar because you want it to have some bite, but you want it to dissolve a little bit of sugar and a little bit of salt to give it that, that sweet and saltiness. Nice. And can, can I try it? Yeah, try awesome. it. Awesome. Now, the, the difference between using a white wine vinegar and, and let's say a rice wine vinegar is the acidity is less in the rice wine vinegar. Correct? Oh, is it? Yeah, that's, and that's why I like making all my own salads with rice wine vinegar because yeah. you, do, you have that little bite to it, yeah. but it's not overpowering. Right. And I think that's why rice wine vinegar works well with rice. Mm. Perfect. That's so I'm going to enjoy this. Mm. That's good just it right? by itself. Yeah, no, it's supposed to be. It's, How can the I word tell sushi right? is all about the rice. Okay, so we have the rice. Let's show them how to make a roll. Absolutely. What do we have to do next? 
it's very simple once you have the rice made to actually make a roll. What you want to start with is whatever you're going to be putting in it. Right. In this case, cucumber. Oh, Sounds yeah, you good? need one of those. Yeah. Here you go. Toss me a cuke. Toss you a cuke. So, I'll let you do everything. And then. I love my job. We're going to be putting this inside of a paper, which is made out of, it's called nori. Which, which is, is actually a, uh, it's actually an mm -hmm. algae. Algae. But it, it's commonly, common nomenclature is seaweed. You just made it sound so attractive. To We're going to call it, well, this is the best seaweed money can buy. This really? is from Maine Coast Sea Vegetables. Okay. Certified organic. Wonderful, wonderful product. It's definitely the best nori I've ever tried. Awesome. It's all we use. All right. So the idea is that you want whatever you're putting in there to pretty much be, you know, the size of this paper. So cucumbers are perfect because oftentimes they're just right. So we're going to trim it just like that. And then you can cut it in half. That way you get two uh, even halves and it's easier to cut. And we're just going to sort of trim around the foamy part the foamy seedy part, which is really wet. Because the wetter you get the product, it'll make it very soggy and sticky, and it can even okay. rip. So water is sort of the enemy of sushi. And if you have time, you can even uh, dry it with a paper towel. Can I do this side? Yeah, absolutely. I feel left out. Help out. <laughs> it's my own show. I feel left out. No, man. We're a partnership here. We are now. Look out. Look for the Mediterranean sushi stand near you. <laughs> Well, that's actually that's where sushi started. It was his little street stands. cart vendors. Right. That's why the raw thing was so. That would be cool. Yeah, no, Could bring it imagine? back. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we do next? So yeah, if you have the time, you can dry these with a little paper towel, but it's it's all right for our purposes. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to get your hand just a little bit damp, dry it on the towel so it's not wet, but right. you have water on your hand so the rice won't stick to your hand okay. when you grab it. Then you want to grab a ball of rice. Ball of rice. About the volume of a tennis ball. Okay. I'll or a little bit first. smaller. I'm volume deficient. So. Or something like that. Yeah, after, after a while, it starts to feel right. So, uh, you know, about that will probably be good. Okay. If you don't compress it, it's perfect. It's about the volume of a tennis ball, but it's not like, you know. It's not a tight. It's not a tight thing at all. Let me say. Yep, tennis ball. <laughs> Got it. All right, so I like to joke. work. <laughs> Why are you laughing at that? I don't know. I'm just patronizing it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I like to work right. vertically. I, I don't okay. know. My mind is sort of oriented that way. You'll see how it works for you. But So you put it right in the middle there. I can see where you say it's sticking already. That's a right? perfect, perfect uh, tennis ball. Yeah, and thank then you. if you want to make sure that you're doing it perfectly, you can rinse your hand off of the rice. Okay. Get all that rice off and get it re-moistened. Re That'll really help you do the... Uh, the detail work okay. here. All right. So then you want to just sort of spread from end to end. Help yourself out. Great. You didn't tell me to do the other hand. Oh, yeah, I know. I forgot myself. <laughs> so just, and, you want it to just, and you want it kind of even? Yep. And so then you just go back and touch up the corners. And if you're really good at this, you can do it in 2.2 seconds flat. And you want to get a nice even cover. Because the idea with with these rolls originally was that you want the rice to surround whatever product you put inside evenly on right. all sides. You know, this is the first sushi I ever made, right? You're doing great. All right, good. You want it to surround the, whatever you put inside evenly on all sides when you eventually wrap it up. But for our purposes, it's actually a different. We're actually trying working toward a different end here. We're actually trying to hide this seaweed completely. We don't want anybody to know there's seaweed under here because they won't eat it. Because we're making an inside-out roll right. with rice on the outside, which okay. was in invented to, uh, to hide seaweed from Americans who cool. otherwise would be a little squeamish about that idea. I got you. <laughs> cool. So this is where right. you can really uh, you know, make, this, make this awesome. I take some sesame seeds on All the right. outside. Now, now the, thing, the thing about sushi, when it was originally invented, it wasn't necessarily a raw fish idea. It was actually to preserve fish, wasn't it? Yeah, well, that's going way back. Like the original idea like the of taking original, rice. The original, like, sushi. Right, right, yeah. right, right. It was actually a way of, um, you know, putting vinegar, a live vinegar culture, inside mm -hmm. of a, f a fish. Right. In order to preserve the fish, the vinegar would ferment and make the fish into, like, a pasty, fermented. Right. Because fish were very good. rare. In the rice right. fields, they would only come when they would flood, and all of a sudden the rice fields would be filled with fish, and they wanted to grab that. Awesome. Because it was actually an inland thing. Okay. Japan picked it up later. So cool. So now we just flip. We're, we're going to work horizontally now. All right. 
So then you can put whatever you want in here, avocado. So, so this is where the inside goes, is that yep. right? Or right in the middle? And it's all about patience. You want to like have the patience every step along the way, and it will really help you out at the end when it all has to come together perfectly. Now, yep. is it is it should be kind of built together, or? I just like to line it up in the middle and just try to imagine what what one sixth of this is going to taste like. How okay. much cucumber you're going to want? Okay. Usually, cucumber is sort of a um, a supporting cast right. item to give it some crunch. Right. But on its own, it's one of it's very popular too. Okay. So this looks good. I think we're going to have some success with these these rolls here. I hope the whole idea behind the show is to be successful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I like. To well, be you successful. will. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. know you will. No, you will too. All right, let's do it. I'm with you here. Okay, so this is where you've probably had some practice. You want to just get it right over there. So it goes right over that. Yeah. Now the important part is to catch this lip right here. Now we're not working with very much inside, right. so it's very easy to do. And you just roll it over like that. And there it is. And that's perfect. All right, so we did our first sushi roll. That's now the, the whole idea roll. about cutting this. Before we cut it, we're actually going to press it real quick. Oh, okay. So it's, this is not used, right? This is not used to actually do the rolling, it's used to press it. So you've already have it rolled. Yeah, well, what's funny is that these, again, evolved for a totally, totally different purpose than they're being used for today. They were used to make inside out rolls where, or I mean regular maki right. style rolls, where the seaweed's on the outside. So the seaweed would actually contact this bamboo, okay. but it wouldn't stick to it. But ever since these were invented, the inside out rolls, it's been necessary to wrap them in saran wrap so that the rice doesn't stick to them. Makes absolute sense. So then just, it's really simple from here on out. You just put it right over like that. Right. Oops, move these blades out of the way here. And you want to just sort of press from the inside out in case you have some something squishy in there. It'll squirt right, out the right, sides. Right, right. And just very lightly, you don't want to squish the rice too much. Get a nice little thing. And then I like to push it forward one time. Yep, yeah, perfect. And do it one more time. And you can even do it again if you're in the mood. And then all the way back. Look, Mom, I'm making sushi. He's, it's done. Wait till you, and then you see what you got. Look out. Yours is definitely a lot more perfect than mine, but that's nah, it. Yours looks good. I think all I right. might have squished mine a little too much. You gotta hate when you squish your sushi. Okay, so now this is important. Okay. You want your knife to be wet. Okay. So you just dip it in there and you let it sort of run down. You can tap it on the rag if you want. Oh, I got my own rag over here. So what's this for, since we're talking about that? So that's a bowl for cooling the rice. It's made out of untreated cypress. OK. And that's to wick moisture away from the rice during the cooling process. So you, of course, you have a lot more rice than what we have yeah, in this no, little bowl. Yeah, no, that's designed for quarts and quarts of okay. rice, <laughs> not cups. All right, so what do we do next? So once you got your wet knife, you want to just start in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you want to just sort of do two cuts. You don't okay. want to push down too much because okay. you can mangle whatever's inside. So you just go through once and twice. Perfect. And then you sort of flip them together like that. And from now on out, from here on out, we're going to do two cuts at once. OK. Just to make a little bit less work for ourselves. So we're going to ultimately cut it in six. So you want to do one and then two. Right. So one and two. Ta-da! Look at that. Look at that. We it's have our first cucumber roll. Cucumber roll. It's, it's great, and we'll get to eat this when we go. Hey, listen, we're going to take a little break, kind of revamp. We're going to do a really great salad. Which one? Five-element salad. Five-element salad. You can't go away because you've got to watch this. And then at the end of the show, we're going to do some of this sushi with some pan seared salmon. So don't go away. Harley and me will be right back. Hey, welcome back. What are we doing, Harley? <laughs> We're going to make my favorite salad, which is called the five element salad. The most time consuming part of this is uh, slicing the jicama, which you have uh, Thank you. gladly burdened. <laughs> you <gave me. laughs> but the second hardest part is making the dressing. Let's talk a little bit about what the salad is. It's a blend of different vegetables and fruits. Yeah. Uh, jicama being one. Right. It's, a, it's a, like a Vietnamese salad. Right. So a lot of very fresh very um, you know, crunchy vegetables and a lot of fresh herbs. Right. We use cilantro. And um, I make a, like a lime sriracha vinaigrette, sriracha being this Thai chili garlic sauce, which gives it a little spice. And I start with lime juice as a base. So what I'm going to do is just quickly just juice these limes here. 
And then to the limes, I'm going to add a little sriracha, like I said, a little bit of soy sauce to give it that, you know, whatever that fifth element is. Umami. Umami. Hey, so you know about umami then, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, it's actually the taste of glutamate, and which is an amino acid, right? There you go. I think. Amino acid, does that sound right? You know what uh, they think of, well, when you think of umami, Lee's favorite thing has a little umami feel to it, and that's steak. Oh, yeah. Mushrooms, steak. Right. That, they're all about umami. Especially uh, right when you cook them, right? Like burn exactly. them, that sort yeah. of classic French style. So a little bit of, uh, I'm using tamari, which is just sort of a gluten-free, no wheat, soy product, just to sort of, because, you know, it tastes pretty much the same when it's in a dressing, and it it just prevents, um, you know, the wheat allergy thing. Right. And um, I use a little bit of blue agave syrup to give it for the sweet aspect. It's a, sort of like honey, only it has like a lower glycemic index. And it, and it helps if you open it. And it tastes nothing like tequila. It tastes nothing like tequila. Okay. <laughs> it's very sweet and delicious. Last time I mentioned blue agave with Dan Mitchell, he thought we were talking about tequila. So. Oh, right, yeah. So how do you want me to cut this? This is the, the Napa cabbage, That's the Napa right? cabbage. I like to make that as thinly shredded as possible. Done. A lot of times I'll use the mandolin, and that just gives it like an interesting texture to absorb any extra dressing if you overdress, which I often do. A little bit of sesame oil, just I a dab. I feel overdressed too right now. Those you have a chef coat, I don't. I feel a little bit overdressed. You look good though. Oh, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so then a little sriracha, like I said. You're already on the show. You don't have to kiss up right now. You're good. <laughs> We're just going to blend that. We do it this way at Vendetta, but you could add a little bit of fish sauce to it too. That gives it a lot of, you know, greater range of flavor than just the soy sauce, but we like to, to leave that out just in case, just so more um, vegetarians and vegans can have the salad too, because it's one good. of the freshest, nicest things I've ever I feel like any. I'm missing something. What, am I, what else was I supposed to do? I have mango. A little bit of bok choy. We have some cilantro and cilantro bok choy. Cilantro and bok choy. You know where that is? Yep. Ah, beautiful. So the bok choy, I get it at the farmer's market, and I rinse it in the salad spinner first. OK. And if you, the, the way to make a salad really rock is to, to put it in warm water for like 10 seconds. Right. Let's show everybody a salad spinner. That's my cool salad spinner. And most people just put it in cold water right away to rinse it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to line it up, and then it'll really spin. I haven't used a salad spinner. I think it's been warped in the dishwasher a couple That's times. <laughs> there you go. Now you're all gyroed out, ready all to right, rock. Beautiful. You put it in warm That's water nice. for like 10 seconds, and that'll open up the plant, you know, vascular stomata or whatever. And then you hit it with the ice water, and He's it'll absorb the ice. He's using big words just to impress yeah. all of you. I, I use the word stomata. <laughs> I've used that in casual conversation before. Have you really? Yeah. Still Does that get the women? No. No, I no. didn't think so. No. <laughs> Definitely not. I'm yeah. spinning my salad while I'm at it. <laughs> like I was saying, you just you, you hit it with the warm water, open it up, and then hit it with the ice water, and that right. will really make it crisp and um, you know hard and crunchy awesome. and cool. So I bok choy is the base, and then I'm going to take some of this Napa cabbage here. You want all of it? Uh, half of it. Half of it. OK. Yep, and then the, the jicama. All of it? Yeah, let's just throw it all in there. That's crazy. And then the really cool part of the salad is, yep, throw the mango right in there. And then the peanuts. I'm using dry roasted, unsalted, organic peanuts, which uh, sounds fancy, but it, you know, right in the peanut section. Nothing too fancy Good there. Good thing. Right. <laughs> Gotta hate when you find them out of the peanut section. So, uh, you think the dressing's ready to go? I believe it is. Okay. Taste it. You want me to taste it? Is that what you want me to do? Yeah. That's See, that's, you know that's really my job at the restaurant. Right. No, you're the executive here. Not bad for a first try? A little spice. Right? Sweet? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Think it needs anything before we go? Or we no. Go? No, okay. no, no, no. Good way to go. So now we're going to lightly dress it. It's probably good. Perfect it, amount of dressing. And we're talking about a simple salad. Everything is raw in here, and that's always good for you. And that's, right? And that's a big key, having raw foods being good for you. You want something to toss that with? There you go. Yep. It's raw and it's also very light. You know, it's got yeah. so many bright flavors that you don't need a lot of cream or oil or cheese or anything that makes most salads 
what they are. It's got quite a bite to it, too. It's yeah, it's, we call it the five element salad because it's got the bitter and the sweet and the spice. Did we say we were missing cilantro or do we have cilantro or is it somewhere? So you can add cilantro to it if you, if you want. want. Okay. I, I leave it out until like, I put it on the menu, but I put it on at the last moment because a lot of people don't like cilantro. It's yeah. kind of a 50 50 thing, and so you don't want to cut your possible. Right audience. So you could have it with cilantro or not, and that'll give it a whole nother level of flavors. I love cilantro. And every bite of this is another amazing flavor, so you can't go wrong with this when you try it out. So this is a real simple salad, something you could do at home, great for the summertime. When we come back, we're going to make another roll, same as the first, except we're going to put some meat in it, in this case salmon or fish. I got Lee all excited. We are actually going to just do a salmon roll inside out too? Yep. All right. We'll do that. We'll see if I got any better in the next segment. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to A Culinary Journey. There you go. That's, that was my drum roll for You're you. Still drum. <laughs> so what we're going to be making is a salmon sushi roll, but we're going to be doing it with a little cooked salmon, right? Yeah, we're going to cook the salmon right up, sort of just to emulate like a California roll, you know, like cooked salmon. Right, 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 right. Right, so just to get away from the raw thing and battle that perception that sushi's all about raw. Okay, so now let, let's talk a little bit about what I'm doing. I'm putting on a, a little crust for this, right? Yeah, a little what bit of it? sesame seeds, a little bit of right. salt, and some black pepper right in there. And that'll, that'll make a nice crust with a okay. lot of flavor. Nice. So, yeah, exactly. Because, um, you know, the whole thing with the raw food is it has a unique flavor when it's raw. And so in order to, to get a cool flavor when it's cooked, instead of just having poached salmon, which is kind of bland, it's going to give it that nice crust. Okay. Give it that umami. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the sesame oil nice and hot. You get right. started now on that. Going over here. And while you're, while you're preparing that, I, I know you talk really well while you, while you prepare your rolls because actually I stood there and he's going to town having a conversation about stuff and uh, next thing I know I have food in front of me and it's, that's the best place to go to yeah. you know, when they can talk to you and Dinner still cook theater. at the same. Yes, <laughs> Something like this show. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you got to be that's on why, the spot. Yeah, that's why I knew you'd be good at this. I got really good at that because I would always, when I used to make pizza, I would always forget to put pizzas in the oven sometimes, and people would come back. And it's I'd an be important like, part, you know. Oh, crap. Right? So then you just distract. I'm like, oh, where are you going to school? Cool, cool, great. Yeah, no, your pizza will be right out. And I'm making it, and then. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna sear the salmon. Yep. And we're not going to get it cooked all the way through. We'll do medium rare, maybe even a little bit less. Right. Now, this is a sockeye salmon from a sustainable fishery. Right. Is no, that right? This is wild Alaskan sockeye salmon Okay. that we get through this really cool company I was telling you about called Sea to Table. And what they do is they FedEx, they FedEx the fish right from the source the day it's caught. That's so awesome. you get it the next day, the day after it's caught. And they, they even, uh, they sent in the day's newspaper, that morning's newspaper, which I thought was a really nice touch. Just to make sure you, you right. realize when it was coming from? So you know exactly when the fish was caught, you right. know exactly where it was caught, and you know that the fisherman is getting a direct link to the chef. Right. So he gets a better price, I get a better price, and there's no there's no real middleman to speak and of. And you could get, and, and ultimately, when you're talking about dealing with raw fish, you want to get as fresh as possible. As fresh as possible, because with salmon too, you have to freeze it before you can serve it raw. Right. And the longer it's in the freezer, the longer it's doing anything, the longer it's in a truck before you even get to freeze it. Right. The, you know, it's going to affect the end product. You can't, no matter how much you spend on fish, no matter where you go to get it, you have no idea how long it was in a boat or how long it was in wherever it was coming from. All right. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get this off of here in a couple of seconds. How yep. are we looking over here? We're looking ready to roll. Cause I'm just I'm dying for this. You know that. It's right? gonna be really good. It, I had you on this show just so I could get free sushi at the end. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's what I'm here for. <laughs> avocado. I like to put avocado in just about everything we make, and it originally was uh, it was put into rolls by Japanese chefs in California, like the California roll. Right. As a substitute for uh, fatty tuna. Like oh, the tuna okay. belly, mm -hmm. because you know Americans didn't really want to try that. That was a little weird. Like I'm eating the fat belly of a tuna. Mm -hmm. So avocado in California was really creamy, and it was a good substitute. And they added a little bit of crab meat, so it still had that fishy, right? Fishy tang. So that's where the avocado roll came from. That's where the California roll came I mean, from. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Now is this what you want me to do? No, that looks good. Oh, yep. Okay. So just tear apart. Tear it apart. Give it some nice texture. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to try this another time, like you could add a little bit of mayo to it. Or some, ooh. 
Isn't that fish amazing? That was incredible. That's good fish. And you can put pretty much whatever you want. I just have a little bit of avocado, like I said, some cucumber for crunch, and I'm going to put a little wasabi inside the roll because the perfect roll should have the perfect amount of wasabi and soy sauce already in it. So you shouldn't need to put it on. You shouldn't need to dunk, but okay. you know, a lot of people like Everybody to dunk. I, I'm a dunker too. So okay. Is this going on right now? Yep. Go ahead and put it right in right the middle up, there. Right there? Yep. A little bit. Oh, you said in the middle. Yep. Oh, apparently I, I don't follow back. directions. I got your back. <laughs> That's good. That's Have you ever good. heard me so quiet on the show? I'm just enjoying life. There you go. Is probably, that too much? Yeah, we can work with this. I could always take some out and no, eat it. We're going to try to roll it, and if it doesn't work out, hopefully nobody can tell. Mm. It's good fish, though, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the trickier... I feel like the guest. This is so awesome. <laughs> it gets a little trickier the more... The more stuff you put in. Yeah, exactly. Especially avocado, because it's sort of oblong, and it's not, right. it's not like a perfect little shape. But we'll make this work. You want to just sort of catch that lip, and if you have to work your way up and knock it all at once, that's fine. And so see, I got the whole lip right there. Right. That's going to make a nice seal. Might squirt out the sides a little bit because it's so squishy. You remember where we put those things? Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> do you want to try to roll it, though? You do the rest. <laughs> I will do the I'm rest. I'm just going to eat the avocado right now. So. All right. See, this is where the part of the show where it's a lot of fun, where we play where are Got the things? It. Okay, here we go. What are they called again? These are bamboo called mats. Yeah, bamboo rolling mats. Bamboo rolling mats. And plastic. <laughs> so so now, real quick, while you're, while you're rolling that, sake isn't the only thing you could drink with this, right? No. Talk about some nice no, I mean, lighter beers. There's yeah, you can put anything in sushi. You can put beef in it. We do like beef. Right. Uh, Vendetta, we put uh, that pan-seared beef. Yes. We're doing a cooked salmon here. You know, not a lot of people do that. And so right. there's a lot of cool beers, especially the beers we have at Vendetta, to try it with, like lighter beers. I brought um, a Rogue Summer Orange, and this is the, uh, the Super Deluxe Morimoto Imperial Pilsner. But we got a bunch of light beers on tap. We didn't open it. We didn't open it. No, it's still closed. Oh, well, that's important. we got to get that We'll open. do that afterwards when we get off the air. So you roll that up. As he opens this up and shows you what, it, what it's all about, sushi is seems a little bit like you look at it and go, I don't want to try that. But you get the right equipment. You try it a couple of times. It's not going to come out perfect in the beginning, but it will come out great. And put whatever you want in it. And that's a lot of people think, well, it's only going to be raw fish. Remember, it's all about the rice. You, you can learn that. There's a bunch of recipes out there, and you can make something this really nice if you had a party. Here, put it right down there so I could eat it. There you go. Wait. And, oh, you need a little a, bit of ginger on here. A little bit of ginger. This is pickled and, ginger. Oh, thank you very much, man. This was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. I had a blast. It's a little nervous. Well, thank you. You shouldn't be. You did a great job. There it is. We have sushi. The culinary journey is over. We went to the Far East, courtesy of Harley. And Luca. <laughs> and you did a great job. Thanks for everything. Thanks a lot. Hey, guys, I'm going to get to this. I'm going to get to some beer. I'll see you next time on A Culinary Journey. You did a great job.